So the annual theme is a world that works for everyone. And the title of the talk is Eternal Givingness. And it's true. So this is a quote from Ernest Holmes, our founder. And he says this in the Science of Mind textbook. God is love and God is law. The law of God is omnipresent and the law of God is omnipresent. The love of God is the divine givingness, the eternal outpouring of spirit through its creation. Okay. Divine givingness, the eternal outpouring of spirit through its creation, all of us. The law of God is the law of cause and effect, which says that we can only have what we take. Since this is a mental and spiritual as well as physical act, we can only take that to which we are receptive. Jesus taught, it is done unto us as we believe. So my belief is, is there, I mean, there is always good coming towards me. Always, always, always. And it's how much of it can I take in? How much can I receive? How much am I willing to accept? And it's infinite. So there's never a time where I can't have my good and everyone else have good as well. There is the do no harm, but you know what? There's always plenty. And if you think like there's not enough water, we have a distribution problem. There's plenty of water in Louisiana. There's too much there. There's not enough here. It's a distribution problem. There is plenty of water, my belief. Okay, so am I receiving? Am I in that state of receiving my good? And you can receive your good unconsciously or consciously. And so that's another place where we have control, where I get to regulate the flow. How much good is in my life? That's in my hands. And he also tells us, every man, and I add, and woman, stands in the shadow of a mighty mind, a pure intelligence, and a divine givingness. So we're constantly being showered by all these gifts. And I say, no, oh, yes. You know, so you're deciding what's going on. And he says, if we are to demonstrate that the divine givenness is a principle in the universe, then we must, must set up a receiving center. Are you a receiving center? You get to decide, I can't tell you. For no matter how abundantly the horn of plenty may pour its universal gifts. There must be a bowl. This one's too small. How big is your bowl? Of acceptance. A chalice, I like that word, of expectancy. Or the gift cannot be complete. So our ground of being, where we stand, is basically showered by that eternal givingness. God is love. God is always giving to us. Definition. Ground, that's it. That's true. And your belief in that is one of the regulators on how much good you have in your life, how much experience you have. What gets in our way? Well, I don't know exactly what gets in your way. What gets in my way is fear, not wanting to change, um, or thinking I'm in control. I, you know, I, I'm afraid to lose control. Well, the fact that I have any control at all is totally an illusion anyway, as anyone who gets out of bed in the morning knows. Even if you stay in bed in the morning, you know that. But the thing is, is that it's like we think we have control, which is an illusion. So I need to get out of my own way of my good. And of course, this, as soon as I start working on a talk, I start getting experiences that relate to it. That's one of the curses, ha, ha, ha of being a minister. So my car decided that the air conditioning no longer wanted to work. I love this car. I've had the car for 12 years. It's got 197,000 miles on it. I love this car. But it needed a major repair. And I thought, you know, it's like my, uh, my claw prints are still in the car. Um, but I needed to let go of the car. 
but I couldn't. But then the new car showed up, and I still had the old car. But then I had to let go of the old car because they, they both didn't fit in the garage at the same time. <laughs> so I, a greater good was waiting to come in, but I had my claws in the old Highlander. It was, like old, it was like old pair of slippers. I was comfortable. I knew how to work it. I have this new car. I have no idea how to turn on anything. I don't know how, you know, it's like it's got bells and whistles and noises, and I don't know. I'm learning. My role now is to fall in love with the new car. Because I, you know, it's like, okay, I'm getting out of my way. My fear was keeping the, the eternal givingness from showing up in my life. In this case, it showed up anyway, and I let go of it. But the thing, do you see the... If, you're, if your hand is clutching on something that is old and comfortable but really no longer serves you, you can't accept the new good until you open up your hand. You can't. And I was going through all this in my mind, telling myself, I, you know, I was, anyway. So there you go. You're we want to cultivate our consciousness and come up with the mental equivalents, getting out of our own way, doing our spiritual practices and tools. One of the things is gratitude. We were talking about doing that. So we're expanding our receivingness. We're taking that muscle and working it. Spiritual mind treatment, which is affirmative prayer. Doing the visualization process with Lori. Doing the dream builders with Kathy Mann when she teaches another workshop. Doing these things and vision, visualization. Doing um, something else called whoop, which I'm going to tell you about. W-O-O-P, whoop. But the thing is, is all this is like m moving those muscles and getting it so we can receive more of what God wants us to experience. I want to give God a good time because guess what? In the meantime, I will have a great time. <laughs> so, but what happens is, and for me, and I suspect for you, is that it's spasmodic. You will go in and out of good times, in and out of receiving, in and out of, and it's because our faith wavers. We forget that there's this eternal givingness. We, we wander off and our thoughts get, um, in a way, they're not serving us. We get in our own ways. And so, it's, you know, darn, I, you know, I do it. And I'm sure each and every one of you has. And you know one of the ways I do it is I judge other people. Oh, that sucks. If you judge someone and say, wow, they have too much money, or, you know, she went out and bought a new car, guess what you're doing to yourself? You're capping down your good because you're saying it's not okay. To, ha to have someone experience that good. You're saying, no, it's only the, and this is more in the old days perhaps, only the poor can be holy. Only the poor can be spiritual. Anybody can be spiritual. The state of your abundance is not a criteria for that consciousness that's within you. So we need to have the faith about it. And the thing that I love is that the science of mind has been using this uh, new thought, ancient wisdom, these teachings for years. And these truths are now being borne out in the scientific community. And it's awesome. So the law of works, and they're proving it. But what they've also done is they're refining the processes a little bit. There's a woman named um, Gabrielle Otingen, and she spells it very strangely, strangely but she's, at the uh, she's a professor of psychology <laughs> at New York University and as also at the University of Hamburg. And her research is on how people think about the future and how this impacts their cognition, emotion, and behavior. So in essence, she's an experimental psychologist. So she sets up experiments to prove the positive thinking and how it works. And she has a new book out called Rethinking Positive Thinking. <laughs> and it's interesting because 
there's a mantra that some of you have probably heard, especially if you've been around in science of mind for very long, and it's called treat and move your feet. So in other words, pray and move your feet. Get yourself going. So how many of you saw The Secret back in 2006? Oh my God, it's, that, it's 10 years ago. I couldn't believe it when I saw that. So it talks about the law of attraction and it talks for asking for what you want, listening for the answer from the universe, which is the eternal givingness from God, and then receiving it. And in their um, way of thinking, it's being receptive, getting a, in alignment with what you want. So the secret... Um, was great marketing, it was packaged really well, but they left out a few pieces, in my estimation. Um, Michael Beckwith speaks, I actually I said, I'm gonna do my homework, so I watched it again. I have an old, old version, um, with Abraham in it, and which I think was stripped out of the later version. But anyway, so there's a refinement to it that Gabrielle is giving us, and I, I just think it's so awesome. And what she's done is she's looked at the different ways in experiments how people can um, accept their good and go further. And one of the things she's done is um, she gave a task to third graders. Now, if they got, if they did this well on this language test, they'd get candy, which I don't think is a good thing, but that's what they did. Uh, so they got candy, but some of them visualized getting the, can getting the answers, getting the candy, doing the visualization, and then that's all they did. And then the second group did the visual visualization, and then they thought it, and they got that, and they felt it, they could eat the candy, they tasted the candy, all the whole process. And then they, um, they thought about what could get in their way. What inside me might it get in the way of my doing the studying I needed or whatever to get the candy? So say, maybe it was watching television. If I watch TV, that'll get in my way. So if I want, if I want to watch TV, then I'll, then I'll just, I'll turn off the television. So they were looking at what could get, what habit, in their case, watching television, could get in their way and then coming up with a plan to mitigate it, to get that out of their way. So that would increase the um, likelihood of them achieving their goal. The other thing about that, and this is what she's finding in her research is, if, and this is interesting, and it's a hypothesis, she's still working on this, I think, but she, and she's obviously published it, and I'm still working with it too, but if I visualize myself having what I want, and knowing that it's mine, in my mind, I experience all the emotions and the physiological impact, and my blood pressure drops. And when my blood pressure drops, I am less likely to move my feet. But when you bring the obstacle in, you've, you've she calls it mental contrasting, you've got the gold, you've got the, the tug that you want, and you look at, and it's feasible, and you look at what is possibly going to get in my way from within me, what habit, you know, mine was holding on to the old car, what habit will get in my way? And then I have, well, if this happens, then I'll do this. And that will raise your blood pressure a little bit and increase the likelihood of your success because you are more likely to get your butt moving. Because p spirit can only work through us if we're willing and able and responsive to moving. So if you, you have your vision and then you get this divine intuition, but you're sitting there waiting for it to just fall on your head, guess what? You're slowing down your receptivity. Because God is telling you, hey, look, this is what, oh, look at that. That's a great idea. Go do it. Go do it. So it's... It's fascinating research, and it's proving what everyone said all along, is that positive thinking is powerful, but it can be refined. 
It can be refined. And I'm going, really? Wow. Wow. So she says, if I could ground fantasies in reality through mental contrasting, which is what I described, I might be able to circumvent the calming effects of dreaming and mobilize dreams as a tool for prompting direct action. And one of the things that happens in the visioning process that Lori's going to do after the service is that you are asked what you need to release which is what an obstacle is. What, is in, what habit, way of being, way of thinking is in you that gets in the way of what you want to be doing, of what your goal is? And I know all, a lot of us, have, we've prayed, we've meditated, we've done all these things, and the good we want in here still hasn't shown up. So I can't guarantee this is going to work, but it might. It's worth a shot. It's a practice. So, you know, so is all those meditations, the visioning, the praying, all those things. Do it all. Do what your heart, what sings in your heart, what works for you. So whoop is a, is a way she's put it together in a way that's easy to remember. So sh the first, the W is wish. And to me, that's not strong enough. That's wishy-washy. But I think, you know, desire, but it's, in her, it's W. The next one is outcome. And that's where you get in there and you really, it, it is kind of a meditation. You're in there, you visualize it, you feel it, you sense it, you know it, you claim it at that point in the outcome. And then the next step, you're already grounded in that positive and that knowing, is what is the obstacle? What in me is going to get in the way or could get in the way? What's possibly going to get in the way? You can also prevent it from getting in the way because you've pre-thought it through and you've already you've sidestepped that obstacle. And you know what? You're going to come up with a bunch and you take the one with the most juice, the, most, the one that's most got the most kick to it. And um, <sighs> then the last thing is you plan. So if this happens, then I will do this. And that's the plan. So whoop, wish, uh, outcome, obstacle, plan. It's on the internet. You can get information and articles about it. OK, so one of my goals is, has been to, um, as some of you may see, to get healthy and, and um, more fit physically. So what I did is I decided that I would um, only eat meals three meals a day, that's it. But I visualized, before that, I visualized being thinner, being healthier, having more energy, um, having my clothes fit, all sorts of things. That, so I got the juice on there. But I also knew that eating between meals was not a good thing for me. So that was one of my obstacles. So I, I grounded that. OK, that's an obstacle. What am I going to do about that? So my plan was. If I want to eat between meals, then I will drink water and remind myself it is OK to be hungry. Because I had a plan. So when that happened, I would reach for my water bottle, which I've always got with me. So you can use this for anything. There was a woman who, in the, who, the experiments, she wasn't getting any sleep. And it's like, oh my god, I can't get any sleep. Well. So her, she, her desire was to get sleep and everything else, and she was just, oh, this is good, you know, and she could really feel it, waking up refreshed, all those kind of things. And then she realized the obstacle was her dog. This was Leslie, her dog Jojo, who wouldn't go in his crate and barked so she couldn't get any sleep. <laughs> okay, well, duh, yeah. So I, I figured this would be a good example because some of you have been there. So but she, what she realized was it wasn't the dog's fault. The dog had been home all day by himself. The dog needed to go for a walk. So the plan was, if I come home tired from work and I'm too lazy to take the dog for a walk, then I take the dog for a walk anyway. Because the dog needed the walk so that it would go in the crate happily and go to sleep. 
so it's like, it's simple little things that we get in our own way because we think it has to, you know, it's an either or. And one of the other things she brings up is if you've got a goal that you're, you're working through it like this and you, um, it's just not working. It's just not working. It's not, fe you know, maybe it's not feasible. I don't, you know, feasible is a definition of you think it's possible. And it goes back to how much faith do you have? Do you have faith it's going to happen? Because if you don't have faith it's going to happen, forget it. It's not going to happen because you're, you're not believing in the eternal givingness. So that's where that muscle, that faith within you is key. Because if you don't have it, the joy of creation, the expectation of your good, that chalice of expectancy, if you don't have those things, then you're spinning your wheels. Aren't you better off letting go of that and working on something that you know is going to show up in your life? I don't know. That's your own. You can answer that on your own. So she, she's just an amazing woman in that she's giving us another way to look at it, another tool, another refinement. And she's proving the results scientifically with kids, with uh, managers, with um, in, uh, faculty members, you know, with all sorts of people. So the process is very simple. It's very clear. And the visioning process is in alignment with it that Lori's going to do. What must I become? What must I release? Those are looking at the obstacles. What's, what else is going on that needs work? And that's what you're talking about. Uh, and she thinks it works because it's, um, it gives us energy and direction as well as the feeling of the attainment of the knowing of what it is that we really want in our lives. And so it's, it's, it's all about harnessing the power, the love, the givingness of God. How adept, how skilled are you at doing that? And that's one reason we come to places like this and live in communities like this, because we surround ourselves with people who are practicing, who can help us in learning and growing and continuing to just uh, increase that muscle, increase that receptivity, that eternal givingness. I like the horn of plenty. It's always dispensing. It's always flowing towards us. Do I have a vessel that's large enough to hold the life I want? I don't know. My vessel keeps getting bigger because my gratitude is growing. And sharing these thoughts have just, it's just done that even more. So whatever you believe is possible is. Whatever you believe is possible. And it's in all areas of your life. There may be one area of your life where you've never quite got it together. Everything else is great. But there's one area. That's how I was, am, as, was, 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 was. <laughs> yeah, it's in the past. So we believe the love of God is divine givingness, the eternal outpouring of spirit through its creation. It comes up and out through us. And when you're doing it, you are influencing everyone else in the community. We're all in it together. So let's close with our affirmation for the, the week. And I'll repeat it, and then we can repeat it together. Opening to eternal givingness enriches my life. 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 Thank you, and namaste.